Bon qui qui, je m'appelle Ross Twiddell from Cultaholic.com. Still your reigning and defending Cultaholic Heavyweight Champion, even though they took the actual title away from me, despite the fact that Wrong Uso scored the pinfall at WrestleMania, rendering our predictions competition for the grandest stage of them all null and void, meaning I'm still the champion. So I'm having to do with this tie thing. Look at me beautiful title belt. But let's forget about that controversy for the time being. Let's think about some happy thoughts as we take a look at all of the WTF moments from the Raw after WrestleMania 35. A Raw after WrestleMania that didn't really feel like a Raw after WrestleMania. Yes, indeed, there was a couple of shock returns. The crowd had a little bit of fun, but it was quite flat. There wasn't quite that pizzazz, that charisma, that show business, those jazz hands that make a Raw after WrestleMania a Raw after WrestleMania. But when the hell did Maggle Cole turn into Bonnie Tyler? There's nothing else to say! A total eclipse of the big dog! Oh aye, that's right, it's when he had to shout for large chunks of a show that lasted for 7 hours, 19 minutes and 24 seconds before going back to work to shout some more less than 24 hours later. Poor Maggle man, what did he ever do to deserve this kind of treatment in his life? Do not answer that. Neil Warnock is God get out of town man, he's that big of a twat, his own eyebrows couldn't stand him, so they left his bloody forehead. Two words for you everybody, Colin Wanker, and I do apologise for everybody outside of the United Kingdom who has no idea who Neil Warnock is, but believe me, it's for the best, you're better off for not knowing who that knobhead is. I'm sorry Sethy Poo, but Brock Lesnar simply cannot be the most dominant champion in WWE history when JBL himself, the massive ass, had a longer championship reign than the Beast ever did. 280 days that Texas two-step and tosser held the WWE Championship for and I know it was because Triple H didn't like the word Tuesdays but it comes to Brock Lesnar and all of his reigns none of them were as big as that so quite frankly Brock Lesnar isn't as good at the wrestling as JBL was. Maggle, 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 maggle. And next up we have Bonnie Tyler himself coming out with one hell of a corker of a line when the New Day came out to make a shock appearance on the Raw after WrestleMania 35. And I quote, maggle, guys. It's the Raw after WrestleMania. Surprises are supposed to happen. So if you're sat there saying these surprises are supposed to happen, easy for me to bloody say, they're not really surprises, are they, Bonnie? I'm sorry, Xavier Woods, but when the hell was the last time you got your end away, you horny little man? Now us WWE fans have become so accustomed to getting so aroused. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> when the New Day do their WWE World Tag Team Champions thing. But while the New Day were showing off Kofi Kingston to be the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion, Xavier Woods, the dirty man, he went all missionary ting on the ring canvas and started humping it like a dog with a lovely fleshy human leg. Now of course this shouldn't really be a WTF moment because as we all know, your boy Xavier Woods, he's rated R. The Usos told us that, but just imagine, cast your mind to the living room, a young child watching Raw, their parent in the room with them, their parent reading the newspaper, their parent looking up over the newspaper and seeing a fully grown man on this children's television show air humping a ring mat. Imagine them trying to explain what the hell's going on. Now I know we've seen it millions and millions and millions of times Biggie has the legs of Stretch Armstrong himself, but still, seeing all of that mass, those muscles, those big, manly titties. Do the splits in the ring on Raw is still something he shouldn't be able to do, and therefore, a WTF moment. So wait there a second everybody, this, I cannot believe this happened. So first of all we have Kofi Kingston getting all kinky, saying hello there, the lasses did win a take all at Wrestlemania, how about me and you Seth, we do the same thing with our manly belts. So then we have Rollins accepting the challenge and then, which is the biggest WTF moment perhaps in recent memory, no McMahon appeared to say no no little children, you can't do that, because we're the McMahons and we're the best, you need to listen to what we say because we're the best. Is it actually finally happening four-ish long months after they all stood there in the middle of the ring on Raw and said, fans, you're the authority now, you make the calls, you make the matches. Why the hell when something like this, which the fans so clearly want, was made, did a McMahon not come out and go, no, you're going to have what we want because we know what you want more than you know what you want. Want. 
Of course, by the end of the show, what I've just said, they got proven to be complete bollocks. But still, at this moment, we were led to believe. It's got soul crushing, isn't it? So I need you to go back to the start of that Raw Tag Team Championship match on last night's Raw and watch Hawkins and Ryder's lovely, disturbing handshake thing. It starts off okay with like a fist bump and a hand slap and whatnot, but it ends on a horrible note with a big old finger. Ooh. Two questions here, everybody. What the hell does that finger mean? And where the hell is that finger going? Now we all know that Kurt Hawkins is a superstitious man after the kickoff show for WrestleMania 35 because we were told with a human voice he changed his attire to dress like the Riddler because he thought changing his clothes might have seen him win a match for once. So he won in that Riddler attire and despite the fact he's a massive superstitious man, on this week's Raw he was back to his old attire that we've definitely seen him lose a match or two on Raw in the not too distant past. I know it wasn't the blue dabba dee dabba die number. But still, he's lost matches in that attire, and as a superstitious man myself, I think that is mental on your part, Kurt. You got very lucky last night, pal. Now I find it hilarious that big baldy bastard Baron Corbin has the announcers reel off his list of accomplishments in WWE, but even he and his lovely shiny, 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 shiny scalp realize the armbar is a massive joke in 2019 in WWE today. Even big baldy bastard Baron Corbin with his shiny scalp and his Weatherspoons bartender attire, his X-Pack go away heat, his millions of dollars, his lovely dog, his watch collection that makes me feel pathetic every time I see it, even he realizes that the arm bar is a massive joke. I'm sorry, Michael Cole, but why the hell were you on Raw last night saying that what big bully bastard Baron Corbin did to Kurt Angle on the Grand Series of all at WrestleMania 35? It wasn't right. He humiliated Kurt Angle. He embarrassed Kurt Angle. How dare he do what he did? When in reality, pal, when you were saying that, you were the one humiliating and embarrassing yourself, you massive pissing dork. So let's just set the scene here for people have been living under the rock. Dwayne Johnson. Kurt Angle challenged big baldy bastard Baron Corbin to a match at WrestleMania. Kurt Angle said, this is my farewell match. Big baldy bastard Baron Corbin, do the honours, pal. They had a match. It was a singles match. It was a clean affair. And big baldy bastard Baron Corbin won fair and square. What's he done wrong, Maggle? The left-handed scout handshake is a formal way of greeting other scouts of both genders used by members of the scout and guide organisations around the world when greeting other scouts. So then... Kurt Angle, big bully bastard Baron Corbin, they're in the scouts. Well, I guess the signs were there back in the day when Kurt Angle quite literally said on WWE TV he would love to have bestiality sex with Booker T's wife, proving he already had his animal lover's badge in the bag. No way! I'm not calling Charmel an animal. Bestiality sex is human having sex with animal. Charmel's not an animal. How nice was it to see Big Lars? He is hoping all of his reported troubles are way in the past. A very good way to make your debut, sir, by killing your father after your father attacked your brother. Yes, everybody, every single bald person in the world is related. It's tough carrying around two championships, claims Michael Cole, who has held a grand total of zero championships in his life ever. Of course, that's apart from Twat of the Year, a title he's held every single year since 1968. Yeah, he was born. <laughs> I know before you go to the comments and say it, his four Slammy Awards do not count because Slammy Awards do not count unless you're Owen Hart because he is the only person in WWE history to actually make them count. Becky, two belts? Can you imagine the scenes backstage? Belts! Belts! Did she just say belts? Belts are what you use to keep your pantalons up. Damn it! What you've got on your shoulders are championship titles, you dirty, stinking ginger! Vince McMahon's words, not mine. She can do more than walk. Why the hell do those two lovely men still have NXT and their nameplate tings on the main roster in WWE? They had their last NXT match last Friday. They lost their match. They did the gerb on their way out the door. They said goodbye. It was so emotional. WWE just let them be real boys. Man. Well, it serves them right for putting those stupid sound effects on Alistair's bored rising ting. Now, I know that stupid sound effect has absolutely nothing to do with that bored malfunction on last night's roll, but I didn't see that bored malfunction any time in the past before that stupid sound effect was brought in now, did I? Give that board some blue chew, man, because Alistair couldn't get it up, could he? Raw after WrestleMania 35 crowd, please get in the bin, will you? Last Friday at NXT TakeOver New York in the same pissing building as last night's roll, probably involving a 
lot of the same crowd who were at last night's Raw. Alistair and Ricochet received a standing ovation. They were moved to tears. They felt appreciated, respected. They got a lovely goodbye. But at the Raw after WrestleMania, during the Alistair and Ricochet match, the crowd did a piss in Mexican wave, which if you didn't know, is what a crowd does when they're very, very bored. What changed in those few days, you knobheads? So with that thing there having a Hawaiian shirt on, it looks like Bray Wyatt has gone from a dark and disturbing magician to a Jim Henson puppet master. Either that, or he's a massive fan of the movie Thanks Killing, which involves a turkey who says a lot of things that I cannot repeat to you here right now, apart from... That's foul play, which is funny because of birds. It's different, so there's that, but as the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast has taught us all with Matthew Gregg's fetish for a good puppet, everything is better with puppets, so we can't be too surprised now, can we? But let's ruin this moment for everybody now, shall we? Because when you take a close look at the box, that thing there, it just seems half as good as it already was, and it wasn't too good to begin with. It meets European health and safety standards. It can't get wet. It's fragile. Its net weight is £10. Its gross weight is £15, and it comes from China. You would have thought the people putting that together would have taken all that speed off the box, wouldn't you? Just takes away the mystique a bit, doesn't it? Why on earth did Dean Ambrose get so annoyed when the loving, the caring, the best friend in the entire world, big bloody Bobby Lashley, said to Dean, Don't worry, Dean. When when you're gone, I'll take care of your wife for you. That was really nice of Bob, and if I was Dean Ambrose, I would count myself very lucky that I have a pal like Bobby Lashley who just cares so much about Renee Young and wants to look after her well-being after Dean Ambrose has left the company. How lucky. But back to reality now, as if Renee Young actually sat there on commentary on Raw and said, what the hell does that mean? Give over, woman. And now it's time for this. Wankity wank, wankity wank. Wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank, wankity wank. Hello everybody and welcome back to Wankity Wank, the section of WTF Moments where someone tweets me a WTF moment I've missed and because I'm a lovely wholesome boy, I give you all the credit. Steve Wilde, what he says there, that's strange isn't it? Not as strange as WWE releasing a t-shirt halfway through the WWE Championship match claiming Kofi Kingston is the new WWE Champion. But still strange all the same. What she say? Say, shut up, Renee. What she say? Say, shut up, Renee. And here's a direct quote from Renee Young on last night's Raw. Maybe Bobby Lashley should keep my name out of his mouth. Now let's take a trip back in time, shall we? And have a look at what Bobby Lashley actually said. Don't worry, Dean. When you're gone, I'll take care of your wife for you. He didn't say your name once now, did he? And that's it. That's the last shot we'll ever see of Dean Ambrose in WWE. I don't think I was ready for it. So Renee Young went away for a while to check on Dean Ambrose and we missed all of the noises that she makes. We didn't get an oh, we didn't get a oh, we didn't get a what else does she do? She doesn't do anything else, doesn't she? How sad is it to see such a talented presenter get reduced to making noises, eh? Anyway, she came back from seeing to Dean Ambrose. Not like that, you dirty bastard. And Maggle Cole, the concerned father, asks her, how's Dean doing? She replies, I don't think I should talk about it. What? Why the hell wouldn't you? You're the wife of the man. You're a commentator on WWE Raw. At that moment in time, you are one of the two or maybe three people who knows how the hell Dean Ambrose is doing. You have the huge scoop. You're a journalist, supposedly. Tell the world what's happening. So then, we can only presume by Renee Young saying that Dean Ambrose is dead. WWE wrote off Dean Ambrose by killing him. So play the screen, Richard. Now I feel good knowing that as I stand here presenting a show that critiques WWE called WTF Moments, Sami Zayn definitely wasn't talking about me, because as I stand here, looking like I do, I couldn't hate myself more if I tried. You know that new film with Joaquin Phoenix and it's Sammy? That's about my life story, you know? I used to think my life was a tragedy, but now I realise it's a comedy. That's about me, Sammy, you dick. Oh. But the question has to be asked everybody, why the hell did The Undertaker attack Elias? Now I know that Elias said the next person to interrupt him is a dead man, but The Undertaker, he's not Beetlejuice, you don't just say his name and he pops out of nowhere. I think it's just obvious to us all that The Undertaker is the single biggest fan in the world of the Doctor of Thugonomics, John Cena, and when he saw Elias talking smack about his homie, 
that he got really, really angry. And rumours have it, everybody, that picture there, that's a picture of Undertaker thinking he's beaten the Doctor of Thugonomics John Cena, but he just couldn't tell the difference because he's so old. Why do I say the things I say? Yeah, imagine teasing a huge winner-takes-all match for two hours and 40 minutes-ish of a three-hour show and then ending that match via a DQ and thinking that would end well. Now, I know it wasn't too much of a shock because it was just Raw and this is the wrestling business, everybody. It was still a load of bollocks, though. I agree wholeheartedly with everything Brooklyn said then. And we end on a sobering note because that sign there, it really says what you think it says, and I can't believe it says that all the way through here in 2019. That's it for the WTF moments from the Raw. After WrestleMania 35, I'm going for a sleep now. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you think in the comments below. You can follow us on Twitter at Cultaholic. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Cultaholic. And if you enjoy what we do here at Cultaholic, you can play us to our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Cultaholic. Hit subscribe and join us.